This is a really important point, and I'm sure a couple of you guys have seen this stuff in the wild. NDIHX, this is another version of NDI we make. It's our high efficiency for a protocol. It runs at about f a little over 15 meg for a 1086dp. So that's about a tenth of the total bandwidth. If you have a church, if you have a school, if you have someone who can do nothing to their, NDI, to their networking infrastructure today, you can put an NDIHX device on it and it will still work because the signal is that small. Now, if you have a really strong internet signal that goes out, you could put an NDI device on the wide area network because they're Wi-Fi enabled. So now we start to look at how do we engineer things to be greater in, in, in the NDI world. And so the NDIHX, I think sometimes gets a bad rap, but it has its purpose, and this is its purpose. It's extremely light. There's some caveats there. Obviously, we talk about the bit rate. It's much slimmer than NDI, with a couple of restrictions. So for something like this IMAX situation, you might not use an HX source. It's maybe three frames more delayed. But consider that that difference in delay is for that ease of use. You know that that HX source is going to work on your network tomorrow. So we make some products that are NDIHX. If you see the, the words NDIHX on that box, that's what it does. A good chunk of the PTZ cameras are NDIHX today. Uh, good stuff. Of this. Most of the stuff that we make contemporarily does full NDI. So it's generationally lossless for over 1,000 generations. Uh, we obviously already have support with HDR. Today we're doing things in UDP. Uh, we also support uh, TCP. And one of the big pieces that, that powers all this and this ease of use is MDNS. This is a bunch of tech jargon, but the short story is NDI probably supports the video you're looking for today, and we do it pretty simply.